to my subject this morning. I'm going to be preaching from what the Lord has given me to give the church. And I'm going to be focusing on verse 22. Amen. The part that we are looking at in verse 22 is the beginning of the text. Watch what it says. Many will say to me in that day. Now this is a background scripture that I'm using to try to place the title of the sermon on is the foundation that I'm putting it on. Here is the subject. If you are explaining it, you're losing. Got that? If you are explaining it, then you're losing. Amen. Third time, just for clarity. If you or we are explaining it, we are losing. Now let me put this in the proper context because explanations they are, are important when they are in the right place or at the right time. Okay? Explanations are important when they are in the right time and in the right place. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to people of faith and believers and the God that has created us, there is no explanation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. When it comes to God and us, Explanations don't work. And if you're trying to explain something to God, you're losing. Amen. Why is that? First of all, how can you explain something to anyone who knows all? Amen. Who does all? Who is all powerful and almighty? How can you give an explanation to him for what he has required of you? Okay. If you're trying to explain something to him, I'm going to tell you now, you're losing. You're losing. You're losing. Now, all of us should take a deep breath and exhale slowly and think about all the explanations that we have placed before God as to why we didn't do certain things or would not commit to certain things. I want you to think about what you're really doing. What you're really trying to do is to justify your sales when there is no justification. Because God does not require anything of you that you cannot do. He doesn't require anything of you that he has not told you to do. So whatever you feel like the reason that you're justified for not doing it, and you try to explain it to him, you're losing. Uh, amen. amen. Can I make this clear? Amen. Now, I told you I'm going to flip it, so I don't expect you to shout. I really don't expect many amens. I don't really expect nobody to put your hands in the air like you don't even care. Don't expect that. I could care less about that. The point I want to make is this. You're trying to explain an excuse as to why you didn't do or not doing certain things, you might as well keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Because you're not going to win that battle with God. Amen. 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 You're not going to win that battle. Now, you might win that bad battle, or the explanation might be good enough for man, but not God. Uh, that goes from pastor on down. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to think about the areas of your life where you know that you are failing. You know that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And God has already told you what is expected of you. I want you to look at it closely and look at it. Now look, forget about trying to explain it. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is be humble enough and enough of a, of, a, of a believer in God to say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to own it. Help me so I don't have to try to explain it anymore. And well, that's what grace will do. Grace will give you and me that ability to do that. The point I'm trying to make is even though you're losing, you can recover. That's what I'm trying to say. You can recover. Because he's a God of grace. He's a God of love. But let me tell you something. He's also a God of justifi justification. Amen. Amen. So I want you to understand that. You have a responsibility as a believer because God said so. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we must look at our lives, look at ourselves, see where we are with him. And the areas that we are slack in, we need to improve those areas. Uh -huh. Can I hit your heart? Uh, no. uh, yeah. uh -huh. All right. If you don't want to be hit, you know. <laughs> in fact, if you want to excuse yourself, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do what the Lord said. I'm going to sit down. Yeah. Amen. You come in here on Sundays. You should do that because the Lord has required you and us to assemble ourselves together. Mm -hmm. Forsake not to assemble yourself. Now, when you come together, you come for worship. Amen. Don't be looking at me all mean out there. I'm not even thinking about you. Amen. Amen. You come in for worship. Uh -huh. God has required us to worship Him. You are created to worship something. Mm -hmm. That's true. And you will worship something. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it be God or not, I don't know. But we are worshipers. Mm -hmm. Some folk worship idols. Mm -hmm. Some folk worship money. Mm -hmm. Some folk worship worship. Uh, Possessions of certain things. They just worship that. Mm -hmm. But we all will worship something. My Lord. Why? You were created to do so. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I could just say on, on and on and keep introducing this sermon before I get to the meeting. But I want you to understand this. Now, watch this. This is where I'm going to hurt some of you all. I just heard you say you thank God for all that he's done for me. Y'all were singing with Rick. Rick done a good job, an amazing job. Amen. Now I want you to analyze that statement. What you're really saying is this. God has my back. That's what you're really saying. Mm -hmm. Because when we need him, he shows up. Okay. Ain't that right? Amen. Amen. See the hand that believe that that God has done all of these things for you. Don't put them down yet. How many of y'all appreciate it? Look at it. I'm looking all over this building. Yes, sir. And they should go up. I want to put up both hands and both feet too. Amen. Because I appreciate what the Lord has done. Now what I'm saying is God has, I'm just saying, God has our back. 
But here's the sticker. Do you have his? My Lord. Now, this is my only bread. Do you have his? I'm not speaking of it. <laughs> but it sounds different now. Do you have his back? What he has required of you and me, are you fulfilling those requirements? And this is where we miss the mark. Let me slap them one cheek. Guess what the Bible teaches us? The Bible, and especially our church, we, we believe in tithing. We teach tithing. Now, why do you think tithing is important? You don't think God knows why it's important? You don't think he knows that it has to be meat in the storehouse so he can continue and do his work? Do you not know that he put the responsibility on you? And not only that, if you do it, this is what he's saying. Not only have I, you got my back, but I've got yours. Because if you do it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw so much at you, you don't have room enough to receive it. And yet, we don't tithe. We don't do it. Tithing is simply something that God is asking for 10% of what he gives you. And you take the 90. Who wouldn't take that? Think about this. Wouldn't you take a return 90 cents on a dollar? Wouldn't you take that? Okay. Now, he's going to take 10% of what he asks you to do. And he's going to make it more than what the 90% can give you. Because he says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. And you won't have room enough to receive the blessings that I'm going to give you. Now, what we are doing by not meeting that responsibility is, I know y'all are going to hear this, but I'm going to teach you. You're cutting off your own blessings. That's true. Amen. He can't give you the 90% because you've got an explanation. Oh. <laughs> You got a reason as to why you're not doing that 10%. My Lord. My Lord. And you're trying to explain to him why you're not doing it. And you think that you can counsel God? Mm. Okay. Huh? My Lord. Huh? My Lord. I told you that we might not shout this morning. I don't care if we don't shout. I don't make a difference. Jesus. You might not have to go to see Sean. Sit in your chair. We might have to Amen. And how do you expect God to honor what he said he would do by having your back, but you don't have his? Jesus. Jesus. How do you expect that? He says to us, what? Give. And it shall be given back to you. You know why some of y'all are struggling? And see, God wants me to tell you this so he can bless you. You know why your finances are really struggling? It's because you're trying to explain the reason why you don't do what he's required of you. I'm a witness. Mm. Of what he will do. Yes, sir. I've been tithing ever since I got saved. Mm. And I remember the times when I was struggling. I'm going to share this with you because I want you to I'm bless somebody. I would go in there and start pinching and not even realizing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But when I fully committed to tithing, when my paycheck ran out that I made that week, mm -hmm. before I could even sneeze, I would get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Somebody's air conditioner broke down. This is not with the boss. I, this is somebody's a refrigerator, an ice maker wasn't working. And I would go and repair it. 
God would make up what was short on that week. I know what I'm talking about. And I think it's time for us to wake up situation. And that money that you think you got, that you're trying to rob him of, when the Lord says so, somebody's going to get it. It might be the police around the corner when you, when you hit the speed trap. Or something. You won't keep it. And I don't care how much you try to explain it. It's just not going to work. Some of y'all know. Y'all are not tired. You are not getting it. You put this show thing on the shoulders of just a few. And here we are wrestling with it. Because you're not doing your part. God told me to tell you something, I'm going to tell you. Now, what you do is, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying to you, if you're trying to explain something to him, you will lose it. Jesus. Mm. Amen. And that nice car you drive, and we got some nice cars that park out here in that yard. God is blessed in one of them. And y'all got some too? Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. He can take that before you can see it. And the only reason he has not done it is because he is trying to hover his grace over you. Here's another one. Let me slap you on the other side. Some of y'all might show up every two months. Or you might show up one Sunday out of a month. And then when you come in that one Sunday, there's three Sundays that you ain't gave no time at all. My Lord. And when you come, you won't even catch them up. But yet, you see us saying what the Jesus. Lord has done for me. My Lord. I know I'm in your old master. I know I'm in it. I'm serving you. I'm doing it real good. I know I am. But I wouldn't say this if I didn't have the Bible to witness what I'm saying. Amen. So stop it. Stop it. Amen. Because the devil is going to rob you. And he's going to see to it that you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. That's the truth. When the Lord hands start to move. Mm -hmm. And y'all know better. Mm -hmm. Y'all know better. You know better. You're trying to explain to God how we are not giving. Amen. God don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Look at that woman in the Bible. There was a woman in the box. She gave the widow's might. I mean, she gave her last. That's the word. They were looking at her. The big shots were dropping, dropping dimes. Man, they were dropping dimes. You know what I'm saying? And she just walked slowly, humbly, and put in one penny. A last. Look at what the Lord said. Guess what? Not only did the folks see it, but the so, uh, they, they see it, but the Lord saw it. Amen. And they were feeling good about what they were given. And the Lord simply said this, you bragging, but this woman has given more than you have. It's just a penny, but she gave more than you. Why? Because she gave what she had. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let, me hit you on the, let me hit you on the butt. Amen. <laughs> I don't got no problem. Chief, let me get you on the get you on the right cheek. <laughs> now, you come in here, you get up in the choir, you sing, you usher, and you sit in your pew, or whatever you do, part of this worship experience. You come in here Sunday after Sunday. God keeps giving you new mercies behind new mercies on top of new mercies. And yet, when it comes to a relationship with Him, you don't have it. When it comes to embracing Him as Lord, you haven't done it. I'm heading to back to the text now. When it comes to saying, okay, Jesus is a friend of mine, sure enough, and I'm a friend of his, you have not made that commitment. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Why am I saying that explanations won't work? The text says, mm -hmm. 
in the very first sentence. Read it for yourself. I go back over it. Many will say to me in that day. Now, what they are doing is that to say, surely, they actually did it. But many will say it. Now, why are they saying it? Because they're saying it because it's the time or it's that day to give an account or to be required of it. They were doing fine until the day that day appeared. But when that day all of a sudden now is on the scene, and what I'm trying to tell you is this, there is coming a day that you're going to wish that you knew him. Jesus. The day might not be today, but in that day, in that day. when it's time to give an account, you're going to be saying something. And you're going to be trying to explain to him why you didn't make that connection. And why are you explaining the whole time you're losing? You're losing. They will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Not that they actually did it. But they will say that. And the reason why they lose them, they lost the battle, is because the Lord already knew what they had to do. And what was required. And he didn't say, come on in, okay, all right, I understand what you're saying. Man. Okay, uh, the explanation is pretty good, come on in. No, no, that's what it said. Lord, we're going to cast out devils in your name. That's what they said. See? Read it by yourself. We've done many wonderful works in your name. Yeah, we sing on Sunday mornings. We ushered up and down the aisles. We came between the four walls. We paid our, our, we paid our money. So that tells me this. Wake up, wake up out there. Don't go to sleep on me. Open up my eyes up and listen to what the Holy Ghost has to say. Amen. And here they are. They are trying to make an excuse. Not going to work. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Stop robbing God. And stop hurting yourselves. And let me tell you something. Here's another thing that we make. No mistake we make. We, we give and we pay our tithes and we expect God to return it like we want it to be returned. You might give that 10%, but it might not come back in money. It might come back in good health, Rick. It might save your doctor be. Amen. When you should have got hurt, you might be able to get around it. So you don't have to pay the Yes, I'll look at it this way. All the time, somebody's giving me some kind of vegetables or fruit or whatever. That's coming back to me. You know, they give me a cabbage head. That means they ain't got to buy a cabbage. Don't help me here. Hey man, they give me potatoes. That I means they ain't got to go to the store and buy no potatoes. See? You do what's required of you and leave the details to him. You don't need to hear your explanation or your reason. God ain't said that. You want to know are you doing what he told us to do? I'm about finished now. Like I said, we're probably going to shout for that. I don't think we Maybe, I don't know. I could be wrong. But that's what he requires. How much time are you spending in this book? How much time 
Or you listening to him instead of running your mouth all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because guess what? When you read the book, he speaks. He tells you and I what is required of us. Amen. I understand now what it means that if any man will come after me, he must first deny himself. I understand that. Amen. That means that all explanations are gone. The cross have took care of kill every explanation that you might offer. Amen. Mine don't mean nothing anymore. Take out my cross, follow him. I know what it means to follow Jesus. It means now to obey him. It doesn't mean that I got an understanding. You remember the sermon I preached a couple of Sundays ago? You might not understand the counsel of God. You might not understand God's wisdom. But there's one thing we all can do. We can oh. trust his will. Amen. Amen. You can, you can trust that. Mm -hmm. That would be fair. Now I was just reading earlier this morning. I'm going to hit this a little bit this evening as I go to Brother Jackson. But I just read in Titus. God will do what he has promised. That's what Titus said. He is not like man. He cannot lie. Thank you, God. A lie mm -hmm. cannot fit God's purpose. Mm -hmm. A lie can't even be around him because he's not capable of lying. That's right. Somebody said preach, brother. Preach. See, now I got it, brother. Brother still, I got it. He can't lie. God cannot lie. Lord, I thank you. And he does not tempt you and me. That's right. To see whether or not we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pass the test. He does not hang these these things in front of our eyes. To see, to see whether or not that we're gonna fail. The devil tried to make us fail. But the Bible says when every man is tempted, he is tempted in his own lust. That's the word. That's the word. And then you try to give God an explanation. Lord, oh, but you know I'm weak. God don't want to hear that. If you're trying to explain it, you're losing. I believe this message is getting in, in, into the right place. I, I can see it. And that's what it should be. Because when the Lord and you do things together, you don't come in here the same way that you left. No person stands before God face to face. I don't care who you are, I beg you. I keep hearing something. I know the devil don't know what said. Because I might offend somebody, but I, I, I keep hearing it. But if I hear it again, I'm going to say it, okay? Yeah. And he say, here, here we are, here we are, here we are. Trying to make an excuse as to why you don't come to church. Why you don't come to worship. Trying to make an excuse as to why you don't pray as you should. Trying to make an excuse. And God is hearing nothing. Says that's what they said, but it also says tells us what God says. Uh -huh. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You don't think God didn't know that from the outset while they were trying to explain it? Think this is what I'm saying last, last year, and y'all can see it. The Lord is getting us on, on out of here. That's the truth. He's getting us out of here. He's getting us out of this world. You hear me? That's the truth. 39 years I've never experienced what we're experiencing now. That's the truth. And don't think it could be you next. That's right. That's the truth. I think it can't be you next. That's the truth. You keep getting these little letters, and 
I get them all the time. Little letters, you get them. Little warnings, little things that are changing in our lives constantly. I don't feel as good as I used to do feel here 20 years ago. I don't see quite like I used to see. And God knows my hair about going. All these little letters, these little things that he drops to us. Let us know that we're passing through here. And it's time to move out. So what I want y'all to do, I want you to see, I want you to look at it like this. Do what the Bible says. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Not pastor, but what the Lord is saying. I heard somebody quote this, and I'm going to say it too. Now, watch this, y'all. If you get your priorities right, I'm going there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. If you get your priorities right, put them in the right places, and at the right time, let me use this analogy. I'm not a mechanic, but I do know this. If you put fire and gas together at the right time, you're going to have a combustion. You're going to have an explosion. But if it's out of time, ain't nothing going to happen. But if it all goes at the right time, boom, something going. So now listen. When the time comes and you're not in the right place, it ain't going to be like that. Because he's going to make sure that the timing is right. And when it's time for you to leave this world, guess what? You're going out of here. Save or not save. Save or not save. And as the tree falls, so shall it lie. Don't expect me to come in and try to preach you into nothing. When you need to do it now. Y'all still love me? Do I? Hey, have I got to try to hoop? Have I got to try to hoop this morning? Huh? I know y'all be here that we sure ain't had no sermon this morning. Because I'm not ready to go. I want you to come back next next Sunday when it's time to move. You can shout and know why you're shouting. Amen. Know why? Amen. Don't get this little shadow thrill. And then next Sunday you ain't got a thing. But this stuff here get into it. The word it says. The Bible says that His word is sharp as a two-edged sword. When that word get in us, it's gonna cut stuff into pieces. Cut asunder. Let's go get in there. It's going to cut it. And why is it cut it? It's cutting to help us. The blessings. See? And then another thing it says, not only will it cut, watch this, I love this part. It will also discern the intent of the heart. What you intend to do mm-hmm. before you even do it. Why is that so important to help you and me? Mm-hmm. All right, put them hands in the air like you don't care. That's it. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Jesus. See, this is how good God is. I want you to. Have his back the same way he has yours. Amen. So when you sing the song that Rick was singing a few moments ago, you can sing it with enthusiasm, passion, Amen. and feel it. Joyful. That's the truth. Now some of us, you know, there's one thing about this passion thing, y'all may not, may not know. Well, let me explain to you anyway. You might not know this, but you know, it's impossible to be in this position without having the gift of discernment. 
Now see, y'all, y'all, I'm getting this stuff now, y'all probably don't know anything about it. But every pastor that's been placed over God's people has that gift. I'll see stuff you won't never see. You ain't supposed to see it. I will know stuff that you will never know. You ain't supposed to know it. My Lord. See? That's why he says, I will give you pastors after my heart. Amen. That's the word. God's heart. And you can tell a pastor after God's heart. Because he's going he's gonna to do the right thing. He's going to yeah. preach the truth. Yeah. He's going to love the, the flock. Mm-hmm. And even though when folk, I heard it, so I'm going to say it. I think if I heard it again, I'm going to say it. Even when folk are put your name out there and doing everything to hurt you. That used to bother me, y'all, because I, I had this thing about, I don't want nobody upset me. That used to bother me. People lying at me. And people trying to hurt me. Doing things, throwing their rocks and hiding their hands. And I know who you are. I can put my hands on you. But you know what? I feel so good about it now. I don't even care. Every pastor has the gift of discernment. He knows the members. See, now you're getting into something you don't know anything about. You're talking that that you don't know. See, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That don't make me special. I didn't call myself here. He put me here. I didn't call myself a minister. He put me in. See, and I'm supposed to love you, teach you, and feed you. My Lord. That's my job. Feed you. So you can grow. My Lord. So at the end of your faith, you will hear him say, well done. Done good in faith for sir. Y'all done some stuff last week? Yes, sir. I know who you are. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody tell me who your name is, but I know who you are. And I wouldn't say a word. I wouldn't even call your name. Well, let me tell you something. What God is doing, you can fight all you want to against it. If he's doing it, you ain't going to win. Now you might think you're getting me. Hey, this is something. Don't worry about me. It's bad. Church folk. Folk talking about God is everything to me. Stuff like that. When we're supposed to love each other, right? Yeah. If I don't preach another sermon, it ain't because I can't preach. Oh, God gave me the gift to do it. But I want you to get this one. If you think that you haven't heard a sermon this morning, okay, that's good. Fine. Lord, Lord, did we cast out devils in your name? Did we do many wonderful works in your name? What not in church attendance? What not did I pay money? Might not spend my time, but I gave some. Some people still pay a dollar in the twenty in the twenty two. I'm serious, y'all. People dropping a dollar in church. Go on. Can you see that? Dropping a dollar and somebody didn't know God was saying. My Lord. <laughs> I told you, you ain't got to be too sharp. Let's just relax. <laughs> All right. Go to the church. Talk. My Lord. What I would like to see, if you don't even come to the altar, if you don't know anything at all about, if, you, if you're a child of God, what I really would love to see, if you're just standing, if you're just sitting in the pew, or whatever you do, just, what I would love to see you do is to come face to face with God and these so-called explanations and be real with Him. Tell you sorry. He'll forgive you. Tell you want to do better 
and do the right thing. He will forgive you. Tell him how sorry you are for hurting the church. Put the church out on front street. When this is God's ministry, tell him, tell him, he'll, 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 he'll forgive you. And if you don't get wrong, if you don't know him, in the pardon of your sins, like I do every single Sunday, I want you to get to know him as your personal Savior. And in the area that you have backslidden in, and let me tell you something, you don't have to backslide all the way out. You can backslide to a certain point. Because if you were still walking with the Lord, and now you were here and no longer there, you backslidden. He said, I'm married to you. I'll do better. I want to do better. Lord, by you, thank you, Father. Slow rain that you gave us here. A moment to teach. I believe that these are your people. They're not mine. They belong to you. And I believe that it's your will that they will prosper and be in good health and their soul prosper. Do me a favor, Lord. Send us some fresh water. Give us some fresh rain. Some fresh enthusiasm. Fresh passion. Fresh desires. Yes, you had our backs and you still have it. But we haven't always had yours. Will you bless us, Lord? Give us mercy, grace. Help us to see what you're doing, even in the midst of six months. How you are getting us on up out of this world. We want to be ready, Jesus, not get ready. We don't want to have to try to offer no explanation at all. We want to be ready. I pray for every single member here. I love them more, whether they love me or not, and you know my heart. I'm praying because I'm concerned about everybody. There's no big eyes in little you. Every person in this congregation is somebody. Yes, God. I'm praying for my brothers and my sisters. Yes, God. Ask you the question. Yes, God. Give them that ability to tell them, to let them know that you can tell the devil he don't and can't walk with them. He has to get behind them. Yes, God. They have the power to resist it. And that power will let them also make him flee from him. Bless all of us, Lord. And we thank you. If there's any sick among us, I pray that you would heal the sick. Lord, there is there's a lot of hurt in our church. Because they've lost loved ones. I know that you can heal that. Yes, you can, God. Thank you, Bring them along. Thank you, Just like you have so many of us. Yes, as well as myself. Yes, God. Bring the healing. Yes, God. We thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Yes, Church says, Last time, y'all still love me? Yeah. I love y'all. And sometimes we have to take the bitter with the sweet, especially when I'm coming up. Now, let me say one last word and then uh, the committee's coming. Let me say this I want to encourage you all who are doing such a glorious and magnificent job. I want to inspire you. I want you to keep your work up. And realize that what you're doing, you're doing it for the Lord. Keep it up, keep it up. Because He's going to bless you for doing it. Keep it up. This church needs you. Can't you see it?
y'all see the suffrage of churches now? Can't you see how churches now? How things are just going down because there's too many explanations being offered. Can you see that? So let the Lord bless you. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what's required of you. And I promise you, you'll be glad that you did. All right, committed to coming down.